I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're exploring the wild with Sharon Hanzik's delightful narrative, Raccoons Don't Use Spoons. Drawing upon her experiences with storytime programs, Sharon crafts a poetic journey into the lives of raccoons, you know, the little masked bandits, revealing their natural history, surprising abilities, and the often humorous encounters humans have with these cunning creatures. This book not only entertains, but also educates on the importance of coexisting peacefully with our wild neighbors. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her delightful book. The links are below the interview. So great to see you here today on Spotlight, Sharon. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Such a cute title, Raccoons Don't Use Spoons. Um, it's funny, raccoons in storybooks always look so cute. When I see them by my garbage cans, they <laughs> seem less cute. But yes. uh, they are lovable animals all in all, don't you think? Obviously you do. Well, they are quite adorable, yeah. but we have to remember they are wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially when they're by your garbage cans, they could give you a bite. So you got to be careful. Tell us a little bit about the etymology of this book. What inspired you to write it and where did the story come from? Well, being a former park ranger uh, and a natural history interpreter, uh, my one of my responsibilities is to provide programming for the general public. And Children's Storytime was one of my programs, which I absolutely love. And Children's Storytime is not just for children. It's for their parents as well. Mm -hmm. And I spend a lot of time researching suitable books for that type of setting. And there are a lot of great books out there, but a lot of the times not exactly what I'm looking for. And after several hours sitting in corners of the children's sections of bookstores, I thought, I write interpretive programming. Why don't I try writing a book? Though I'm not the artist, so I did need to hire someone for illustrations. And also, we have a large nature center at the state park that I worked at. And lots of camping in the Brazos River bottoms, which, of course, campers encounter a lot of wildlife. Number one being raccoons. So many stories and anecdotes would come in on a Saturday or Sunday morning asking us, where's the grocery store? And we're like, yes, raccoon got into your ice chest last night. <laughs> so lots of stories uh, followed from campers and gave me the material to compile this book. Awesome. Is there a most memorable raccoon encounter that made it into your book? Absolutely. There is a page in there, an illustration where it talks about locking away your food. Mm -hmm. Now, usually that's a problem with tent campers, but we also had a story. A camper came in one morning to let us know that he was very upset. So we're waiting. What did we do wrong? Mm -hmm. No, he was not upset with us. He was very upset with the raccoon who chewed a hole in his soft top Jeep to get to the ice chest that he smelled. And so <laughs> amazing, amazing. You think it's safe if it's locked in the car, but if you have a soft top on your Jeep, maybe that uh, squirrely raccoon can find its way in. That's great. Um, what do you hope kids take away from your story? That they have a better understanding of the wild world around them, that they understand this little animal that most people in our country will come in contact with, whether they live in the city or the country, and that we can learn from them, we can observe them, that we do not make them pets. Hmm. Some people do, though. I mean, I think I see yes, that on okay. social I've media. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they do it with possums and uh, armadillos and all kinds of crazy stuff. But yeah, don't make a, a raccoon your pet. I agree with that 100%. Have you envisioned this perhaps as an animated um, uh, feature for kids to watch, maybe even when they go to visit uh, the state parks or national parks? Well, I know that it has been used, at least the reading of the book, in different settings, such as Texas Parks and Wildlife has an um, outdoor family camping workshop. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things that they use for that uh, Great. presentation, Great. for the for letting the campers know what to expect and what they might encounter. And I never did envision that until it was mentioned to me about a year ago, hmm. about an animated 
series or something. Yeah, right, so. or a feature. Yeah, that, I think it'd be great. I mean, uh, first of all, so many kids today consume their information from watching it rather than reading it. I think that'd be great. Although reading certainly is very important as well. So is this your first book? It is the first one that I have published. I have uh, five other manuscripts. Okay, so they're waiting to go. Are they going to be raccoon adventures or other animals or children's books like this one? Or tell me about it. Well, there will not be another raccoon adventure, but I do have one about owls, one mm -hmm. about otters, possums, spiders, and prairie dogs. And they're all written in verse because we learn well from verse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> People forget that you remember things forever if they're rhyming. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's a, a great idea, a great tool. And it uh, seems like marketers have forgotten it. Commercials years ago used to always rhyme and have a jingle and you'd remember everything, you know, I, but uh, they don't do it anymore. But I do think it's a great idea for kids' books. So um, that's a great assortment. You've got um, prairie dogs. You said you've got owls. And uh, so this will also teach children what to do in encounters with these different animals. Yes, and just to learn a little bit more about wildlife native to North America, I have mm. found that there are, are more scientific books for children that are a little for a little bit older children, but not as much for the very young children and those who are beginning to read. That's great. Well, like I said, now you got a whole series. You could have an animated feature on each one of those animals and what to expect. Um, and I think that would be great. That'd be great. What when you're working at? Do you still work at the national at the state park? I have been retired for a few years, but now I volunteer with a state organization that does a lot of the same things that I used to do. Oh, very cool. Was there a favorite animal you still encounter at the park? The North American river otter. Oh, That's okay. the <laughs> <laughs> Now, how did that river otter steal your heart by its hijinks? Tell us about that. Yeah, it's just watching them swimming and having a good time, being quick enough to evade the alligators that reside in the park. And they're just a fun to watch. They seem like they really enjoy life. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And tell me about what's, what park did you, do you work at? It was Brazos Bend State Park in okay. Texas. Okay, great. And what type of uh, um, facilities do they have there for the folks who want to visit? It was, it's a 5,000 acre park, which is encompasses uh, hundreds of acres of prairie, bottomland forest, and wetlands. And the number one draw are the American alligators. And number two would be bird watching. Very nice. There's lots of camping, uh, 40 miles of trails, a nature center, and the George Observatory. Sounds great. Sounds great. Tell us why you decided to name the book Raccoons Don't Use Spoons. Another anecdote from a camper <laughs> who had a crock pot plugged into his site and sitting on the table and was just checking and stirring it and left the spoon laying alongside it on the picnic table and stepped back into the camper for a moment, came out and saw the little raccoon absconding with the spoon. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the raccoon took the spoon, even though they don't generally use spoons. No, but could they is the question. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. What was it like writing the book? Did it just flow out quickly or did it take a while to develop it? This actually flew out quickly with just mm -hmm. a few tweaks and edits to follow. It was uh, meant to be. <laughs> awesome. And what was it like collaborating with the illustrator? Tell us about that. Very, very easy. Uh, I tried to be as succinct as possible in my visions for the book. Uh, for the illustrations, and I don't believe I made more than two changes. Great. That's great. So you would basically say, I'd like to see this, I'd like to see that, and then they would implement it and get a thumbs up or a thumbs down from you? Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Well, it's a delightful book. It is written by Sharon Hanzik. It is called Raccoons Don't Use Spoons. It draws from her experiences working the story time detail at the state park near her home. And uh, she crafts a poetic journey into the lives of raccoons and helps children and their parents too understand their natural history, their surprising abilities, as well as the humorous encounters that they often have with humans. Sharon, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. My pleasure, thank you. Pleasure's all mine. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time.
on Spotify.